Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be installing Endeavor OS inside VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. Before we begin, let's take a look at the minimum requirements to get this installed. Your PC is going to have to have at least two gigs of RAM. Four was better. You're going to need 20 gigs of hard disk space, at least two CPU cores, and you're also going to need the ISO image file that we'll be downloading directly from the website. You're going to need VirtualBox, and if you don't have VirtualBox already installed, you can check out this video, and I'll walk you through the steps. All the steps and tools used in this video will be linked in the description below. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to grow my channel as big as possible to reach as many users as I can. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at getting this installed. Here we are at our Windows 10 desktop. I'm going to open up my browser. I'm at Google right now, and we're going to search for Endeavor OS or Endeavorous, whichever you want to call it. The official URL is endeavorous.com and click on that. We're going to go to the main page and then we're going to want to go over to the download and help section over here. And then we're going to go to latest releases. So if you scroll down a bit here, you can see that the latest version released is 21.5 and that's the ISO image file right here. Just scroll down a bit till we get to the link. And uh, basically you're just going to pick the location that's closest to you. You can see the servers over here. So what you can do is you're going to want to basically locate the location that's closest to you. They have quite a few locations listed over here. So if you're noticing issues with that, you can try other links uh, like the GitHub might be pretty good. Uh, that one's downloading fairly quick. So I'm going to let that download. I'll jump over to the next step after this has been completed. All right, the download is complete. You can see that over here. You can go ahead and close out of the browser. And you want to make sure you know where it's located. I have mine downloaded in my downloads folder. And here is the ISO image file. We're going to need to refer to this one during the setup. So I'm going to minimize this for now. I'm going to open up my VirtualBox manager. And the first thing that we're going to do is click on the new button up here at the top, and we're going to give it a name. Endeavor OS is the name I'm going to put in here. The machine folder I'm going to leave as default. If you're having, if you're running into space issues, you can just select a different folder or a different drive on your computer. Next for type, we're going to be selecting Linux. And inside here for version, we're going to be going up to Arc Linux 64-bit, and then we can click on next. For memory, you're going to have to have at least two gigs of RAM. At least two gigs of RAM is recommended. I'm going to go up to four gigs and click on next. We're going to leave the default version for create a virtual hard disk now. Click on create. And then default for this as well is VDI. We'll leave that as is and click on next. Dyna dynamically allocated we'll leave as is as well and then click on next. For the hard disk space, I recommend having more than 10. 20 is recommended, so that's what I'm going to be putting in here. So 20 gigs. And again, for the location size for the VDI file, you can change this location if you run into space issues. Once that's all complete, you can click on create and you'll see that it loads up here on the left hand side. We just need to do a few changes to this. So we're going to make sure it's selected and then we're going to click on the settings option up here at the top. And we're going to go over to the system menu. And by default, these two options are selected and we just want to make sure that they're on. We're also going to go over to the processor tab if you want to add multiple more cores. I like to have at least two cores available. So I'm just going to increase that to two. Uh, you can max this all the way out if you need more power. We also want to make sure that the PNX is enabled. So we're going to put on a checkmark box there. Then in display under video memory, we're going to max this out. 128 is the highest I can go there. So that's what I'm going to be selecting. And then we're going to go over to storage and under controller IDE, we're going to select the empty disk here. And then over on the right hand side, we're going to select choose a disk file. And this is where we need to point to the file that we just downloaded. It's in my downloads folder here. And here is the ISO image file. So I'm going to click on open and then click on OK. And that's it. We're, we're done setting up the virtual machine and now we're ready to start installing it. So we're going to make sure it's selected over here here on the left hand side and then you can click on the start button. So you have a couple options over here at the top. We're going to be selecting the default installation method so you can just hit enter with your keyboard or it'll time out and it'll select it automatically so I'm just going to hit enter. Okay, So now we have the installation menu here and we're going to be selecting the first option which is start installer so we'll just click on that. And I typically use the offline installation. You can use online if you want that just means it's going to do updates. Uh, offline is just going to use whatever's in the ISO image file. Okay, and now we have the installation wizard. So we're just going to be selecting all the default regional options. So you're just going to select whatever best suits you. Uh, I'm going to leave a lot of mine as default. So American English is fine for me. The location it's selecting Toronto. So I'm in Canada. That's good for me as well. And click on next. And then the keyboard I'm going to leave as default. Click on next. And in here, I'm good with this. Uh, I'm going to be selecting the entire disk. This is going to be my virtual drive. So that's completely fine if it deletes it. As you can see, it's the 20 gigs that we had supplied. And then click on next. And then you're going to 
to type in a name. So you can type given any name that you want here. It'll auto fill in the username and the computer name. And then you can also type in a password. So you can check this option over here if you wanted to automatically log into your computer. I don't mind typing in my password, so I'm just gonna leave it unchecked. And then I'm gonna click on next. Here are all the settings that we selected. And then you can click on install and then install now. This installation process might take a little bit of time as it unpacks all the files. I'll skip over to the next part. So it looks like we're all done. Everything has been installed and it's ready to restart. So I'm just gonna check the restart button here, click on done, and it's gonna reboot. Okay, so one thing that you have to do is go to optical drive and remove your virtual disk. Because right now it's booting off the ISO, so I'm just gonna remove the disk, force the unmount, and then I'm gonna just restart this virtual machine. Power off, there we go, and then we can just start it back up. Okay, so here's a boot screen. It's automatically gonna boot right away if you don't select the first option. Right now, we're gonna be typing in the password that we had entered during the installation. So you go ahead and type that in. And as you can see that it has our network connection now up and running. And we are at the desktop of the Endeavor OS. So you have the options right after this installation when you're at the desktop to go ahead installing applications. You can go ahead and do that right from this interface, the welcome screen. You can also just do it later, close out the window. You have the menu over here on the left-hand side, and then you have your browser over here. You can start using the operating system, download and install whatever applications you'd like to. And let me just expand the screen over here. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna full screen it so you get to see the entire screen. We'll switch to full screen mode, and there you go. So, uh, Guest Editions does not need to be installed. It automatically adjusts to the full screen. You get those options already built into the operating system. So great functionality and it's up and running. You can start using the operating system right away. Please don't forget to smash the like button. I'm trying to reach as many users as possible. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to the channel. I have many more operating systems coming out and other tools and tricks to use with virtual machines. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.